Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hello and welcome to this service of worship. I'm the provost here and my name is Kelvin, and names are part of what we're thinking about this weekend. This service will be a celebration of the Feast of the Holy Name, a day when we think about the naming and name of Jesus. For every time we meet, we meet in His name. Welcome to St. Mary's Cathedral, Glasgow. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God is love and we are God's children. There is no room for fear in love. We love because God loved us first. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith. God our Father, we confess to you and to our fellow members in the body of Christ that we have sinned in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry. Forgive us our sins and deliver us from the power of evil. For the sake of your Son who died for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. God, who is both power and love, forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by the Holy Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal God, we give thanks for your incarnate Son, whose name is our salvation. Plant in every heart, we pray, the love of him who is the Savior of the world, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. 
When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Give thanks to the Lord for his glorious gospel. When I was expecting my first child, I received a lot of advice on how to choose the right name. Make sure you can yell it out on a playground and it will roll off your tongue while not embarrassing you was the most practical advice I was given. Other advice centered on the person I wanted my child to become, the way I wanted them to be viewed by the world, and the history and wisdom I hoped the name would imbue onto the child for whom I was waiting. Today, we are celebrating the Feast of the Holy Name. Today's feast marks the day when, in the custom of the Jews, eight days after the birth of Christ, he was circumcised and officially given his name. But the naming of Jesus was a bit different. In a time before sonograms or gender reveal parties, Mary knew the child growing inside of her was a boy and she was to name him Jesus. The angel had instructed all of this nine months previously. So why does this feast day matter? We knew what he would be called. Mary knew, Joseph knew. Why does it matter? It matters because names have power. Our name is an integral part of our identity. Names have the power to lift us up, to separate us from those around us, and to remember who and whose we are. Names bind us to our history and set us up for our future. Names are crucial. Names also carry with them the possibility of rebirth, allowing friends to call you by a nickname, changing one's last name after adoption, or choosing a new name that better represents the person you were born to be. Names have power. The name of Jesus is a name that was meant to signify to a weary world that God was with us. The name of Jesus is intended to invite all who hear it to come and be restored to fullness. The name of Jesus is a name that is intended to evoke images of justice, peace, love, holiness, forgiveness, glory, and power. But the name of Jesus is also a name that has been used by zealots to justify death war, pain, intolerance, cruelty, and hatred. The antithesis of what God meant when that angel appeared before Mary. So why does this feast day still matter today? Because we are still called upon to ensure the name of Jesus the true and living Christ is heard and made known to all the peoples of the earth. Names have power, and we have choices as to how we engage with that power. Each time we gather to worship here with St. Mary's, we meet in Jesus's name. We make a choice to declare to the world that the name of Jesus is open, inclusive, and welcoming. Since the start of the pandemic, we have broadened our reach, which has ensured more people from more places can hear the name of Jesus from a community who know his name is one of open-mindedness, inclusive justice, and radical welcome. But that does not mean our work is done. On the contrary, 
All Christians are called to share the good news of God in Christ. And if our community of St. Mary's decided to rest on its laurels, we would betray the call of our baptism. Today's feast matters because it is a reminder to all of us that the name of Jesus matters. The call to share his name matters. In a world that often shies away from names that could offend, we are called to raise our voices loud and proud, declaring the life-changing love that we have found in the name of Jesus. At the start of this new year, let us pray for the coming of God's kingdom, saying, Lord, your kingdom come. Eternal God, we pray for all the peoples of the world. In a time where there is widespread anxiety and uncertainty, and where public discourse is increasingly strident and divisive, that they may know you as the God of peace, we pray to you. Lord, your kingdom come. We pray for the communities in which we live as they continue to deal with the effects of the pandemic and its threats to livelihood, remembering especially today all involved in theatres, music and dance. Let you watch over their going out and their coming in, we pray to you. Lord, your kingdom come. We pray for nations, for leaders and governments, as they continue to face choices and make decisions in balancing conflicting interests and priorities that integrity may mark all their dealings, we pray to you. Lord, your kingdom come. We pray for all who labour for righteousness, those who speak out for the disadvantaged and abandoned, those who hold authorities and governments to account. Let your presence and help may give them courage, we pray to you. Lord, your kingdom come. We pray for communities torn by dissension and strife, for the many places in the grip of conflicts about territory, ethnicity, religion, money or resources. That your forgiveness may bring them healing, we pray to you. Lord, your kingdom come. We pray for the anxious, the lonely, bereaved, those for whom this Christmas and New Year has been particularly difficult. That consolation and peace may be theirs, we pray to you. Lord, your kingdom come. We pray for the church, your household and family, today remembering the province of the Anglican Church of Congo, the churches of St Andrews of Drossen and St Peter's Darai and all involved in our adult learning projects here in the cathedral. That your people may be firm in the confession of their hope, we pray to you. Lord, your kingdom come. We pray for Kevin, our bishop, and for all who bear Christ's name, giving thanks for those companions of the way who bring us light, comfort or encouragement that their lives may proclaim your glory, we pray to you. Lord, your kingdom come. We pray for those who are separated from us by death, and today we give thanks for the extraordinary life, courage and the bold, unshakable witness of Desmond Mapili Tutu. May he rest in peace and rise in joy. And at their year's mind, we remember John Swinton Brown, Ada Inglis and Albert Charles Thorpe. That theirs may be the kingdom which is unshakable, we pray to you. Lord, your kingdom come. And we pray for ourselves as we begin this new year. That our lives may be ones marked by hospitality, generosity and love, we pray to you. Lord, your kingdom come. Amen. A new year is a time for picking up new habits and making new commitments. 
If you don't already do so, maybe you'd like to join those of us who give money regularly to enable the ministry of this place. To find details of how to do that, or to make a one-off gift today, just go to thecathedral.org.uk and click on the words, Donate to St. Mary's Cathedral, Glasgow. And thank you. Let us present our offerings to the Lord. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own we give you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Worship and praise belong to you, Father, in every place and at all times. All power is yours. You created the heavens and established the earth. You sustain in being all that is. In Christ your Son, our life and yours are brought together in a wonderful exchange. He made his home among us that we might forever dwell in you. Through your Holy Spirit, you call us to new birth in a creation restored by love. As children of your redeeming purpose, for whom Christ Jesus humbled himself and became poor to make us rich, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. Glory and thanksgiving be to you, most loving Father, for the gift of your Son born in human flesh. He is the Word existing beyond time, both source and final purpose, bringing to wholeness all that is made. Obedient to your will, he died upon the cross. By your power, you raised him from the dead. He broke the bonds of evil and set your people free to be his body in the world. On the night when he was given up to death, knowing that his hour had come, having loved his own, he loved them to the end. At supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body. It is broken for you. After supper, he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all, that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your Son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and this wine that overshadowed by the Spirit's life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage in the company of the Virgin Mary, the apostles and prophets, and of all God's children, living and departed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen.
The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, unite us in this sign. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. God is with us wherever we are. As we gaze in adoration, we feed on God in our hearts and minds that we may in turn feed the world. O oh God, even as this broken bread was scattered over the hills and was gathered together and became one, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory and the power through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Light eternal, you have nourished us in the mystery of the body and blood of your Son. By your grace, keep us forever faithful to your word in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you for sharing in the worship today. Today we've remembered that the baby in the manger is a person with a name. Jesus. And whatever your name is, and wherever you are, I pray that Jesus will bless you this week. Christ Jesus, who by his incarnation gathered into one all things earthly and heavenly, fill you with his joy and peace, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.